Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed your lunch. My name is Kyra Altman, and I am the founder and CEO of Mental Health Promotion, also known as MHP. We are an organization dedicated to providing mental health education to high school students and educators across the United States. And my name is Nora Hennessy. I will be Mental Health Promotion's COO, specializing in mental health policy, and I am also a GW undergrad. When I was a sophomore in high school, a friend confided in me that she was contemplating suicide after years of facing untreated depression. I felt helpless. There's me, type A personality, wanting an immediate fix or somebody to tell me what to do. And then I began wondering, why don't I know what to do? With eight million students in our country suffering from mental illness, why aren't we taught how to handle these situations in the health education class every student is required to take? These are the problems. First, there are zero health education classes taught in this country that incorporate mental health topics. Students do not know where or how to seek help. Educators are unable to identify high-risk behavior in their students. And the few schools that do address mental health education do it through very brief assemblies. All of these things contribute to 70% of all students suffering from mental illness going without treatment. And we also know that this lack of treatment is connected to school dropout, substance abuse, suicide, eating disorders, self-harm, the list goes on and on. Before developing our solution, we decided to contact our customers and see what the problem was. We talked to 10 superintendents, 100 educators, and over 300 parents and students. What we found was that superintendents, who are our customers, their biggest concern was reducing school dropout and finding innovative ways to train educators to identify high risk in their students. Therefore, our solution to turn a reactive system into a proactive system was to one, empower students to utilize healthy coping mechanisms, and two, enable teachers to identify and react to high-risk behaviors in their students. Last year, my team developed a 900-page knowledge base that incorporates mental health instruction and the limitations of the existing health class, which is physical health focused. Our findings have been validated by five mental health experts and have been used to create three products. The first product is a curriculum guide. This curriculum guide incorporates mental health topics into the existing health class already taught. It is easily implemented because it can be taught by high school teachers already employed within the school district. It is also the first of its kind because it recognizes the importance of teaching both mental and physical health while promoting wellness in students. Our second component is professional development. We will develop professional development training courses for educators, which enable them to identify and properly react to high-risk behavior in their students. And finally, we've developed an online platform that coincides with the first two products. This platform offers resources such as videos and hotline numbers, as well as community resources to students, parents, and educators. Our first sale to school districts will be to sell our curriculum guide and online platform together for $1,000 per school district. Every year after this initial sale, school districts will pay $500 in order to maintain their subscription to our online platform and obtain new material for our curriculum guide. Once developed, our professional development will be another major revenue stream, costing $100 per person. We will plan to train not just health teachers, but all educators and administrators within a school district. This is a viable revenue stream because all teachers are required to participate in professional development and school districts must budget for this. These prices may seem low, but they're based off of customer interviews and are what our school districts are capable of paying. We also have talked to superintendents and we've asked them, what are your highest concerns? They care about improving academic performance, reducing school dropout rates, and budgetary savings, which can be as large as $600,000 every single year. MHP aims to accomplish these goals. We know that the better students perform, the more money a school can receive, and we will help the schools save money and save lives. There are 27,000 high schools in America. There are 15 million enrolled high school students and 3 million educators within the United States. With your help, we intend to reach 230,000 students, 2% of all American high schoolers, by the year 2020. 
Before bringing our product to market, we will implement pilot programs across the country, allowing us to get referrals, testimony, and proof of concept. Then we will continue attending conferences, which allow us to reach hundreds of thousands of educators at the same time with specific interest in mental health topics. And finally, when we go to sell to districts, we will contact superintendents because they have the final purchasing power, but we will also contact health education teachers and we will encourage them to propose our curriculum within their own school district. This was deemed successful through implementing our first pilot program. As of this year, we have secured a piloting location for this fall at my former high school, Lemonster High School in Massachusetts. It is an ideal location to pilot this program because it has the third highest suicide rate in the state of Massachusetts. Our pilot program will impact 400 students. We've also designed evaluation metrics, which will allow us to receive feedback from the students and educators involved, which we will then use to improve our course content and publish our materials the following summer in 2017. We will begin by targeting private and charter schools because we know that they have shorter sales cycles and larger budgets for preventative curricula. Then, after the first year, we will target public schools. We will look to public schools that have been struck by tragedy or that are within districts that have mental health initiatives. Finally, we will look to schools within states with mandates that require mental health education for their students or training for their educators. And we won't just wait for these mandates to appear. One of our greatest accomplishments as of so far has been working with Massachusetts Senator Jen Flanagan to both help write and pass a bill that requires all 700 high schools within Massachusetts to incorporate mental health topics into existing health education classes. We hope to pass similar legislation in other states, but luckily we are not reliant on this legislation in order to continue our sales. For the first three years, we will rely on revenue streams from the curriculum guide, the online platform, and grants and funding. In 2018, we will then develop our professional development curriculum, which will be our main revenue stream. At this time, we will also have a $500,000 operating margin, which will allow us to support modest salaries of the CEO, COO, and two professional development trainers. By 2020, we hope to expand our curriculum to private and public institutions, such as police stations, hospitals, and other settings such as that. We have identified 20 major private, corporate, and family foundations that provide grants for mental health purposes. We have also identified grant writers to help us receive these grant allocations. Our goal is to raise $250,000 in our first year, including the $35,000 from this competition. We will use this money to one, become a legal entity, two, publish our materials and online platform, three, hire a part-time grant writer, and four, invest in sales and marketing. In just one year, our curriculum has been showcased on ABC TV at three conferences featuring over 1,500 educators and in various newspaper articles. We have also received over 10 awards, including the Changemaker of the Year Award and the Community Hero Award. This is in addition to seed funding of $5,000 from the GW Commitment to Action Fund and United Way Youth Venture. A little bit more about our team. I'm Kyra. At age 12, I founded my first social venture, the Every Paw Counts Dog Walk. At age 16, I founded a community service organization called LEAD, which received congressional recognition for our sustainable public health programs. At age 18, I helped to write and pass the mental health bill discussed earlier. And at age 19, I am the founder and CEO of Mental Health Promotion. Every program I have ever been involved in has focused on advocating for people without a voice. I also have over 10 years experience maximizing social impact within a program, partnering with local organizations, and directing a large team. I've also been incubating MHP specifically as a Compass Fellow and a Clinton Global Initiative Commitment Maker. And I'm Nora Hennessy. As Mental Health Promotion COO, I will work to oversee volunteer and intern recruitment, as well as grant proposals. I will also work with legislatures and local groups to encourage legislation that would require mental health topics be taught in schools. My experience comes from being a policy and advocacy director of public health in the nation's largest student think tank, and I'm currently working to reform GW's mental health services. 
MHP's team members help to develop our knowledge base and will work with additional volunteers to reach out to 50 superintendents and 100 health educators per month. Our Board of Advisors includes Paul Richard, the Executive Director of the Shine a Light on Mental Illness Initiative, Mark Altman, the CEO of Mindset Go, Senator Jen Flanagan, the Senator responsible for sponsoring our mental health bill in Massachusetts, and Dean Wizery, the Health Education Instructor implementing our pilot program. In the coming years, we also hope to recruit additional advisors such as grant writers, corporate outreach advisors, and people with various expertise. With your help, by 2020, we intend to reach 230,000 students. We intend to reach 30,000 educators and 5,000 corporate professionals through our mental health training programs. Mental illness is not limited by the extreme cases we see on TV, like suicides and gun violence. Every student in the United States can benefit from self-advocacy, stress management, and coping skills. Think about a high school student you know. One in five is at risk. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you, you talked a lot about your advisors. I noted that none of them were mental health professionals or doctors or curriculum developers. Can you talk about the folks who Sure. Have deep issue expertise on that? Sure. So one of our advisors is Paul Richard, the executive director of the Shine a Light on Mental Illness Initiative. He specifically has been the director for 35 years, and a lot of our experts that have reviewed our findings have come from partnerships with that organization. So he has psychologists working for him, community members that have worked in mental health facilities, and many different people with that expertise, and that's also how we have an in to get our findings evaluated. That was a very, can you hear me? I think that was a very interesting presentation and it's very commendable that you're uh, focused on mental health at such a young age. Um, school districts always complain about not having enough money. Mm -hmm. So will your program help them save money uh, or ensure more students? Uh, show up for classes? Sure, so 50% of all students that suffer from mental illness actually drop out of high school by the time that they should be graduating. That's a huge number, and that also is how we've gotten the number of schools saving $600,000 every single year if those students would have stayed in school. So we're definitely saving them money, we're improving academic um, performance as well as attendance, and that also allows schools to receive more money through their own grants if their students perform better. And as for our pricing for our products themselves. These are based off of customer interviews, so we've spoken to superintendents and to health education teachers in order to determine how much money are generally spent on products such as these, and we are very competitive with other curriculums for other subject materials, and this is something that school districts already budget for, in, for curricula and for professional development. So with respect to uh, HIPAA and compliance, the way these programs work, you're going to need to track uh, usage. There's often a stigma, particularly with young folks, about mm -hmm. mental illness. How do you do that and protect the data and make sure the confidentiality between the students that are accessing the data? Sure. So one of our partners is the Shine, the Shine Initiative, which we talked about a little bit. Um, and what they actually plan on doing is in every high school that implements our curriculum, they will use a youth advisory team within the high school with those students. And then those students, along with um, educator partners and the community organizations, will work to make sure HIPAA is respected and will also protect students' privacy. Um, one of the main, major components of our entire curriculum is to make sure that the ev it is evidence-based content. Um, it has been reviewed by experts, and also we are giving teachers the tools to handle these situations if something does come up in the classroom. I'd like to, you know, your, your approach to getting legislation passed, I think, is brilliant, and, and that might be a way to get through mm -hmm. to some of these districts, uh, which leads me sort of to the big question, which is, isn't there a, aren't there smarter ways and quicker ways to get distribution moving faster? So for instance, uh, alliances with publishers that already cater to the K through 12 
Uh, you know, there's there's obviously there's there's a couple of big publishers that do this, Scholastic, McGraw Hill, mm -hmm. uh, and others. Uh, you know, there's probably online distribution as well. Have you thought a little bit about ways to get your product in market faster? Which is really what con you're a content company at right. some mm -hmm. point is the way to think about it. To me, that that sort of is really important uh, to right. think about. Yeah. Well, so a lot of big organizations, such as the National Alliance on Mental Illness, they may do workshops, but there may be one day, and schools typically don't allow those workshops to come in because they cut into classroom time. However, they do have connections within school districts across the country. So we're hoping to partner with organizations such as that, possibly um, publishing organizations. Also, our professional development for teachers will be taught through in-person, but also webinar online video trainings to increase that distribution rate. Um, and then our online platform as well will be a website that provides resources to students, educators, and parents based on a subscription basis, and that can be accessed from anywhere in the country. And speaking about legislation in particular, so we've already passed this bill that requires 700 high schools in Massachusetts to incorporate mental health topics. And when we passed this bill, we had student testimonies, and Kyra and her previous team for mental health promotion worked to incorporate their ideas into the bill itself, therefore getting mental health promotion already involved in anybody who had seen the legislation and worked with the legislation, so that when schools became aware of said legislation, they knew who they could turn to for their products. One of the biggest challenges holding back this, or holding back this issue mm -hmm. is the word stigma, which we heard once already. Mm -hmm. How will you tackle that head on and, of course. And, and address it. So stigma is a huge problem and it prevents a lot of students from seeking help. Um, like we said, 70% of all students go untreated and we think mental illness is never going to disappear. However, that number can get much smaller. Um, so if anything, we are empowering students to seek help and to seek treatment. And even if we're just getting that conversation to open up, we're still going to lower those m numbers of lack of treatment and probably um, and definitely help with early intervention. Um, so our goal is really to improve that treatment ratio um, and also encourage students to talk to overcome that stigma within their classroom. And another way that we're combating stigma is by changing the way that we talk about mental health. So in large part, many of the, one of the issues that we have with current curricula for mental health is that if it is at all taught, which in most cases it is not, it's only done in a single unit of an entire class. By, incorporate, by incorporating mental health topics throughout a curriculum, throughout a semester or year-long class, we are therefore opening up a longer discussion, which makes the stigma a lot less um, acute, I would right. say. Yeah. Sure. So I have two questions. One is is first about your structure. Are you guys planning on uh, becoming a 501c3 organization? Yes, that's actually built into our budgeting um, with money from this competition. This summer, we are going to become a 501c3. Um, and then by 2018, we will have all of our professional development completed, as well as we will already have for a full year been selling curriculum guides. Great. Um, and then my next question is really just about the dissemination of your curriculum. Sure. Um, I, I also founded a, a health education-based organization and scaled it. Um, and my question really is, and in, in, in I'm asking this based on the challenges that, that we had, mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you really plan on, um, you know, kind of going out into the community and making sure that this is something that, that can be scaled? Do you guys have uh, volunteers who, who you're training to go then uh, train educators and, 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 and train students Sure. Um, you mentioned you had like a student uh, ambassador or, or something along so those lines. So we line. have, um, so we have eight team members, um, and they all work to establish our knowledge base. And all of us this summer will also be trained in mental health first aid training to give us that extra push of validation and experience. Um, and that also is budgeted into our expenses. Um, so we will use them as well as interns. Mm -hmm. um, so we will be reaching out to uh, through. A variety of different methods, especially through networking and conferences and whatnot, in order to gain a source of net of interns and volunteers that would help us, you know, hit the ground running, get out, have, make those cold emails, and really get the word out. But our team members, as Kyra said, through that training, will be professionally certified to go ahead and teach our professional training and development courses. So mm -hmm. that's how we will get that pushed through. Right. And then in terms of your curriculum, uh, oh, it's time. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much, everybody. Yes, thank you.